this is Leah with Prevailing Word. So we got a new year, 2024, and what's some of the first things that people start thinking about is their New Year's resolution. You know, what's it going to be this year, right? Are you going to be, like, determined to not have a negative attitude about everything? Well, some of us need to be determined every day not to have a negative attitude. What is it? For some people, it's their weight. For some people, it's their muscles, whatever it is, okay? So that's really what I want to talk to you about today, you know, as not necessarily a New Year's resolution, but a new you. A new you in Him. A new you in Him, okay? And the only way that you can achieve to this new you in Him is to eat the believer's diet, okay? What is the believer's diet today? Oh my goodness, let's get into the Word and allow the Word to get into us today, okay? All right, we're going to start off in Matthew 4.4, 4, if you have your Bibles, okay? And it says uh, in Matthew 4.4 4, that Jesus was led and guided by the Holy Spirit. So he was in the will of God, okay? He was led and guided by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. How many of y'all are in the wilderness today? I'm in the wilderness, okay? He was to be tempted, tested, and tried by the devil. And he went without food for 40 days and 40 nights, and later he was hungry. Verse 3, and the tempter came and said to him, if you are God's son. I'm going to tell you what, that's the foundation of every one of these temptations. If you'll go back and study that and in, um, in all of that, you will find that the foundation of these is, trying, is Satan trying to get us to doubt who we are and what we have in Christ Jesus, that we are the children of God, right? He said, if you're God's son, command these stones to be made, made loaves of bread. But he replied, it has been written. It is written today, right? Man shall not live and be upheld and sustained by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, okay? That's the believer's diet. That's what's going to give you the you, new you in him today, okay? But... The only way you're going to be able to use it is written as if it is carved on the tablets of your heart. Right? You can say it is written, but what is it? What is it written? What is that scripture you're going to use about your circumstance? You know what I mean? We got to stand. Having done all to stand, we got to, we got to sword fight with the enemy. And the only way we can do it, you must fight spirit with spirit. You cannot fight a spiritual battle with carnal methods, okay? There is nothing in this world, no help in this world, that is going to be able to help you against a spiritual realm, okay? Except for the Word of God. All right. Jesus uses the Word against Satan, and actually he's talking, he's quoting from Deuteronomy um, 8.3. So it says here in John 4.34, I love this, when the disciples came to Jesus with natural food, right? What does he say? He said... My meat is to do the will of my Father, right? And to finish what I was told to do, right? My meat. That is my nourishment, right? Jesus is the Word of God. John 1 and 14, it says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, okay? All right. When Jesus was questioned as to how he got to the other side of the sea, okay, this is how he responded in John 6, 26 and 27. And I'm reading mostly out of the Amplified today. He said, I assure you, I most solemnly tell you, I have been, you, you have been searching for me, listen to this, not because you saw the miracles and signs, but because you were fed with the loaves and filled and satisfied. It was because your flesh was satisfied. You didn't care really about the things of God. Now, come on, some people might think that that was not a very nice thing for Jesus to say, but he was trying to get them to think. Why? Why are you seeking after me? Why? Right? We're supposed to seek first the kingdom, not our flesh, right? Anyway, it says in verse 27, he says, tell, he tells them this, he commands them this. Stop toiling and doing and producing for the food that perishes and decomposing and the using. But this is what he tells us to do. But strive and work and produce rather for the lasting food, which endures continually to life eternal. Just like the song we were singing, even when we don't see, he's working. He's working inside of us. When we eat the word of God and we're digesting it, it is working on the inside of us, creating that new nature, bringing us into his image. It's, it endures continually to life eternal. The Son of Man will give, furnish you for that, for the God the Father has authorized 
and certified him and put his seal of endorsement on him. Woo! That's pretty cool. <laughs> seal of endorsement. Praise God. Jesus goes on to tell them in John 6, 50, excuse me, John 6, 57 and 58. Just as the Father sent me, and I live by, through, because of the Father, even so, whoever continues, listen, continues to feed on me. He is the Word of God. I'm going to do a teaching pretty soon about how there's no separation between the written Word and the living Word. But he said, you continue to feed on me. Whoever takes me for his food and is nourished by me, this is Jesus, shall in his turn live through and because of me. That's the abundant life that John 10.10 10 is talking about. Whenever he says, it is a thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I, the Word of God, have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly, right? This is the bread that came down from heaven. It is not like the manna. Like the manna, yeah, it was a it was a it was a it was a natural thing, you know, but it says that our forefathers ate yet died. It was something that they could actually eat, right? But he who takes this bread for his food shall live forever. Forever, forever, forever. And what is so awesome about that, if you, if you guys are really interested in immortality, there's a teaching that I did called Clothed in Immortality. And John 1 and 14, I just said this, that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, right? Jesus is the Word of God. You go over to Revelation 19, 13, it says that His name, talking about Jesus, is the Word of God, right? And 1 Peter 1 and 23 says that we are not born of a corruptible seed but of an incorruptible seed, which is the Word of God. Okay, so I want you to think about this just for a minute, and if you guys want to know more information about this, you go to that teaching called Clothes in Immortality. Maybe I'll try to put a link down below in the description. But when you were born of your mom and dad, you were born of a natural seed, right? Your mom and dad came together, bada-bing, bada-boom, there you are, right? But a natural seed, okay? But if you want to attain to immortality, that means no death, right? That means forever, right? You have to be born of an immortal seed. And that's what the Word of God is. You go read it for yourself, 1 Peter 1 and 23. We are not born of a, a, of a, nat, of a corruptible seed, in fact, in some translations, but an incorruptible seed, which is the Word of God. So whenever you digest the Word of God, that is more and more immortality that you're taking. That is being born of that immortal seed, okay? And guess what an immortal seed produces? It produces an immortal body. Just like a natural seed produces a natural body, okay? Praise God. Good stuff. We can attain to that by and through his word, okay? Why would Jesus, when he told us to pray over in um, Matthew 6 and 11, why would he say, give us this day our daily bread? It's a type and shadow of the Old Testament. I wasn't even going to go here, but the Holy Spirit's telling me to. Okay, so in the, in the Old Testament, they got manna for one day, right? They got one day. That, it, was, it was a faith walk. They got it for one day, and they got to eat it, and then it was gone. It went bad, right? Give us this day our daily bread. And that's exactly how Jesus wants us to pray every day. He told us to pray that way, okay? In Luke 12, <clears throat> Jesus was given that the parable on seeking first the kingdom, not the earthly things such as food and drink and clothing, but instead Jesus was stressing to them the importance of being faithful stewards in what God has called us to do. It's not about the numbers. Success is being faithful in what he's called you to do. Maybe just living your life according to the word of God is the greatest witness that you will ever be to somebody. But he's called you to be faithful, okay? Faithful to seeking first his kingdom. Just like, just like you were saying earlier about Isaiah 50 verse 4. You know, that he gives us the tongue of the learned, that we may know how to speak a word in season to all who are weary. And he wakens our ears every morning to hear as the learned. Praise God. We are be, so 1 Peter uh, 3 and 15 says that we are to be ready to give to every man an answer of what? Of the hope that we have inside of us. Do we have that hope? Come on. Praise God. All right. In Luke 12, verse 42, okay, it says this, The Lord said, Who then is that faithful servant, the wise man, whom his master will set over those in his household service to supply them what? Their allowance of food at the appointed time. Are we servants? Come on. Do we have something to give? 
freely we have received, what are we doing with that? Are we a dead sea? We're supposed to be like a river, right? A dead sea has everything flowing into it, but nothing flowing out of it. we got to have something flowing in and flowing out, right? Anyway, <clears throat> their allowance of food at the appointed time. And it says, blessed, happy, and to be envied is that servant whom his master finds so doing when he arrives. Oh, my goodness. Truly, I tell you, he will set him in charge over all his possessions. All his possessions. When the master puts us in charge of his household, come on, there's no pride in that. We're supposed to be speaking the good news, okay? Why? Because it's deliverance. It's healing. That's what uh, Psalm 107 20 said. It said his word and it healed them and delivered them through all destructions. How will they hear unless someone is sent? Right? Praise God. When the master puts you in charge of his household, all those needing to be fed, he expects you to give them their allowance of food, their ration of food. And not only that ration, but at the proper time. That's why it's so important to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay? There's a lot of other spirits that people are into nowadays, but I'm going to tell you what, the Holy Spirit is the most awesome thing that you can be into. He will, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. He will show you things. He will, he, will sh he will give you these divine appointments right when you need them. And you'll be able to give out that ration of food. And it will be perfect. It will be that perfect pearl. Acts 20 and 28. This is to us. I'm, I'm, not talking, I'm not talking milk today. I'm talking meat today. Acts 20 and 28. It says, be on guard for yourselves and, not just for yourselves, for all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God that he purchased with his own blood. That's something that Charlie and I were very, very adamant about. We always wanted to make sure that we were doing that. For example, I want you to look at Joseph, okay? Now, what we just talked about in Luke was, was this master putting people in charge, giving people out their rations at the proper time, okay? I want to look at Joseph in Genesis 47, okay? We read of a severe, I'm just going to kind of set the stage here. There was a severe time of famine. You guys can go back and read that for yourselves. In which God had brought Joseph, what? Out of the prison. And then he foresaw, oversaw their, their food supply, right? And then Joseph's family, who totally had rejected him, right? He came, came to him for food. And in Genesis 47 and 12, we read this. And Joseph supplied his father and his brethren and all his father's household with food. Now listen to this, not just food, but according to the needs of their families. Okay? Now listen to this. This is very crucial. It says the needs of their families. Okay? In the natural, when you feed families, you have those of different ages. In a family, you have a mom and dad. They may be in their 40s. You got some teenagers. You got some little kids. Maybe even you got some babies. Are all of them eating at the same level? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Right? So, but Joseph was commanded to do this. He had to do this. He had to give rations to them according to their needs. Now, babies are going to need a small amount of milk, right? Come on. It says in 1 Peter 2, 2, like newborn babes, you should crave for, thirst for, and earnestly desire the pure, unadulterated spiritual milk, that by it you may be nurtured and grow into a completed salvation. Did you get that? A completed salvation. So that means that just because we ask Jesus to come into our heart, that's not just the end of salvation. That's the beginning of salvation. That's the beginning. There's so much more than John 3.16. John 3.16 is awesome, but there's so much more, okay? 1 Corinthians 3.2, Paul says this, However, brethren, I could not talk to you as spiritual men, but as to non-spiritual men of the flesh. Come on. Whenever you're trying to have a conversation with your spouse, you can't have that conversa same conversation with your two-year-old little daughter. Can you? Uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> he said, I could not talk to you like this. Non-spiritual men of the flesh, in whom the carnal nature predominates as mere infants, in the new life in Christ, and even unable to talk yet. Come on. You can't even have that conversation with a little baby, right? 
I fed you with milk. Paul's saying, I fed you with milk and not solid food, for you were not strong enough to be ready for it. But even yet, you are still not strong enough to be ready for it. You know, some little babies have to be on milk a little bit longer. Come on, you parents out there, you know what I'm talking about. Some little babies are just ready to go ahead, ah, give me that steak, let's go. <laughs> you know? It's all at their different time frames, right? How about Hebrews 5, verse 12? It says this, for even though by this time you ought to be teaching others, you actually need someone to go back and teach you over again the very first principles of God's word. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who continues to feed on milk is obviously inexperienced and unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness, of conformity of the divine will and purpose, thought, and action, for he is a mere infant and not able to talk yet. There we got that phrase again. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just really feel led. I think my concordance is working right. Hang on a second here. I just really feel led in my spirit to bring this scripture to the surface. It is 1 Corinthians 2. Bear with me one second here. 1 Corinthians 2. Verse 6 and 7, okay? Now listen to this. This is talking about being around spiritually mature people. This is talking about having the adult conversations, okay? I'm saying that um, as a figure of speech. I'm not talking about adults because adults can be infants in the realm of the spirit. Come on up higher. Hebrews 6, let us go on to perfection. Come on. It says here in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 6, Yet, when we are among the full-grown, the spiritually mature Christians who are ripe in understanding, what do we do? We impart a higher wisdom, the knowledge of the divine plan previously hidden. But it is indeed not a wisdom of this present age or of this world, nor the leaders of this world or of this age who are being brought to nothing and are doomed to pass away. But these spiritually mature people, it says in verse 7, but rather what we are setting forth is a wisdom of God once hidden from human understanding and now revealed to us by God, that, is, that wisdom which God devised and decreased before the ages for our glorification. And what does that wisdom do? It lifts us up into the glory of his presence. Come up higher. Come up higher. Come on. That is what we impart when we're around the spiritually mature. When we can share the meat of the word with others. Yes, we should be willing to share the milk. Okay, we should be willing to. But it is a beautiful thing when you can start coming into meat. Praise God. All right. Now, it says in um, Hebrews 5 and 14... Oh, actually, let me, let me set the stage here. You think about this, this, this person in the natural, this adult, okay? They cannot be sustained with milk like babies, okay? They can't, they cannot, they will be malnourished. If you or I would try to live on milk for the rest of our lives, what's it going to do to us? We're going to be malnourished. We're going to be malnourished, okay? It says in Hebrews 5 and 14, it's likened to this. But solid food, I'm talking about meat today, okay? Solid food is for full-grown men, those whose senses and mental faculties are trained by practice, right? What happens? The Word gets into you, and you practice it. You don't just hear and not a doer of the Word. You practice it, right? Okay, <laughs> keep going on here. Practice to discriminate and distinguish between what is morally good and noble and what is evil and contrary either to divine or human law. So that's why David was saying, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Sometimes the sin, a lot of times the sin is worry, doubt, fear, and unbelief. But the more you get the word inside of you, then you have every right to turn to Satan and say, It is written! <laughs> it is written! Thy seed shall possess the gates of thine enemies. Whatever your case is, there's a scripture for it, praise God. Thank you, Father God. Thus a faithful steward of the word of God, which is what the believer's diet should consist of, is able to discern two critical points, okay? If you're in ministry, you need to be able to discern these two critical points. What type of ration needs to be given and to what people, right? And when. There's a time and a place for it. 
There's a time and a place for it. And the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into that if you will yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. Not my will, but thy will be done. He knows what those people have need of. That's why it's so important whenever you go and you feel like God is wanting you to talk to somebody, you say, God, let me not lean to my own understanding. You know, maybe you know stuff about these people, but it doesn't matter. Lean to his understanding. Praise God. All right. That's why it says over in Luke 12, 42, that we're supposed to give, um, give people allowance according to their, I mean, give people a ration according to their needs. Okay. Proverbs 30, verse 8. I love this. It says, keep deception and lies far from me. Okay. Neither give me poverty nor riches, but feed me with the food that is my portion. My portion. Give me this day my daily bread. He knows what you're going to face every, every day. You guys, you young people, I think most of you guys here are very young people. If I were you, I would get into the book of Proverbs. And I would eat the book of Proverbs this year. Because it is so wisdom. And it's going to help you. And it's going to make you grow. Now, I should say that that's just a suggestion. It is the word of God. But pray. Give us the day my daily bread, right? Proverbs is going to help you so much. I wish I would have hearkened under Proverbs long ago <laughs> whenever I was a teenager. All right. Now, personally, we need to be aware of spiritual malnutrition, okay? In Job 23, 11 and 12, it says, Job says, My foot has held fast to his steps. His ways have I kept and not turned aside. I have not gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed and treasures the word of God uh, the words of his mouth, more than my necessary food. Job is the oldest book in the Bible. And he was teaching us right here, even before Deuteronomy, that we should, should live by word, God's word alone, right? Praise God. Job had the heart of a true believer. A true believer is a doer of God's word and knows the importance of spiritual food to the spirit man. Without a daily portion of God's true word, one can put his spirit man at risk of spiritual malnutrition in the Holy Spirit. So what are we nourishing? Okay? 2 Corinthians 1 and 22. It says, He has also appropriated and acknowledged us as his, excuse me, as his by putting his seal upon us and giving us his Holy Spirit in our hearts as a security deposit and the guarantee of fulfillment of his promise. It's a guarantee of a fulfillment of this promise. So we are nourishing that down payment, okay? That is the pneuma hagion, okay? So what's, what's the difference? People say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Okay, so pneuma theo is the giver, right? And pneuma hagion is the gift that he gives us, okay? So there's this precious gift that we, give, we get whenever we ask Jesus to come into our heart, okay? We receive this gift, and now when you get this gift, you want it, he wants it pressed down, shaken together, running over, man. You just want to double and double and double. For you ladies out there that have made bread, you know sometimes if you get too much yeast in your bread or whatever, just go, Phew. that's what he wants to happen to us, right? He wants us to grow with the increase, an increase with the increase of God, praise God. All right, when one is not feeding the Holy Spirit, this new mahogion that is within him, then the Holy Spirit is being deprived so you ask Jesus to come into your heart. You get this down payment of the Holy Spirit. And then because of lack of knowledge, people don't know how to nourish it. You nourish it with the Word of God, okay? As a result, by not feeding the Holy Spirit, one is in fact feeding the other spirit because there are two spirits, right? We know there are two spirits. So malnutrition is the lack of proper nutrition, right? We know this. By not having either enough to eat or not eating the right things, or being unable to use the food that one has. And we must look for signs of spiritual malnutrition today. That's really why I came here, okay? All right, so these are some red flags for you if you're taking notes, okay? Some symptoms of spiritual malnutrition are a reduced appetite for either the Word of God and the things of God, or a reduced appetite for the words of Satan and the things of the flesh. Okay? So when you're feeding one, you're going to have one or the other. Okay? Matthew 6 and 24 says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. 
It's talking about mammon here, but we have two spirits going on here, right? Number two, either feeling weaker in the flesh, the stronger in the spirit, or feeling weaker in the Holy Spirit and stronger in the flesh, you know? I mean, come on. How about those times that I just don't think I can hear from God. I'm just that I'm not feeling. God, you used to talk to me all the time. He's never left you. He's never forsaken you. It's you that has said, Psh, you know, it's you. He says in Galatians 5 and 16, if you walk in the spirit, you're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. It says in verse 17, for the flesh is set against the spirit. So people in ignorance don't realize that when they're not in the word of God, they are causing the spirit man to be malnourished, okay? Because the flesh is constantly working, working against the spirit. Because these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please. In Romans 7 and 18, he said, in my flesh dwells nothing good. I promise you. That's why Paul would say, I serve God with my spirit. That's the only way that you can serve God. Because God is spirit. God is not flesh. Praise God. Okay, number three. Either fear is decreasing as faith increases, or faith is decreasing as fear increases, right? Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? Praise God. How about number four? Being spiritually in tune with the master. What master? Whomever one is allowing to feed them. So you're going to be spiritually in tune with whatever spirit that you're allowing to lead you, okay? One can be in tune with the Holy Spirit and able to know the things of the spirit, thus being dead to the flesh, right? Or one can be in tune with the flesh and able to know the things of Satan, thus being dead to the things of the Holy Spirit. Romans 6 and 16 says, Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, that you are slaves to whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness? Come on. The true people of God know the importance of a balanced diet in God's rightly divided word. And we are disciplined to feed the spirit man inside of us. I'm telling you what, if you want to truly have that abundant life, you will feed upon the Word of God day in and day out. Just like Joshua 1, 8, and 9, you know, says if you meditate upon His Word day and night, He's going to make your way prosperous, and you're going to have good success, right? When the enemy starts coming at you, and he will come at you, it doesn't matter where you are. Come on, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan, you know? That was the trying of his faith. It doesn't matter where you are, the enemy is still going to try to bring these thoughts. But if you have the ammunition... Inside of you, you're going to live that abundant life. You are going to live that abundant life. All right, in Ezekiel chapter 2. How many of you guys know when we eat the word, we speak the word? When you eat the word, you speak it. In Ezekiel 2, and first I'm just going to go uh, to 8 here. It says, God's talking to Ezekiel. Now you, son of man, listen to what I am speaking to you, and don't be rebellious like that rebellious house. That's what some of us, he's telling some of us today. He's like, dude, listen to me. I know what's going to happen in the next 10 years. Hello, I know how to make your way prosperous and for you to have good success. How many of you guys want to have a prosperous life in the next 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, till Jesus comes, <laughs> right? What does he tell him? He said, open your mouth wide and eat what I am giving you. Then he looked at me, and behold, a hand was extended to me, and behold, a scroll was in it. When he spread it out before me, it was written on the front and on the back, and written on it were songs of mourning and sighing and woe. And then he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll. And then what? Go speak to the house of Israel. And that's what he's telling each of us today. You eat this scroll, you eat this word, and you speak it. Because it's going to bring life. It's going to bring healing. Because why? Jeremiah 1 and 12 says, I'm watching over my word to perform it. Praise God. If you want to be a powerhouse for God, to have the word without measure is to have the spirit without measure. And I could show that to you. That's over in um, John chapter 3, around verse 33, 34, okay? 
So he opened my mouth and he fed me the scroll. And he said to me, Son of man, feed your stomach and fill your body with the scroll. Fill your body with the scroll. And then I ate it and it was sweet as honey in my mouth. And he said to me, Son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak my words to them. God's first requirement for Ezekiel was that he ate the scroll. There's a lot of people out here that are trying to go and preach, preach the gospel that don't know the gospel. Jesus said over in John 8, 31 and 32, If you continue in my word, then you're my disciples. But then you're going to know the truth, and the truth is going to make you free. Okay, it's going to make you free. And guess what? That same freedom you can extend to everyone around you. Because you have learned how to overcome that situation. You have learned in that situation how to say, it is written, okay? Praise God. Now let's look at Jeremiah, where we see more clearly that what was given to Ezekiel was nothing short of God's word. In Jeremiah 15 and 16, Jeremiah says, your words were found, and I ate them, and I ate them, right? And they became a joy to me and a delight of my heart, for I have been called by, for your, by your name, Lord God of armies. Come on. Now, I want, you to, I want you to think about something just for a second here, kind of off the wall. Have you ever heard that saying, you are what you eat? You are what you eat. Okay? I have a dear friend of, um, of mine, and one time we were in line, and we were um, going to get some food, and they had a garbage omelet. Okay, it was an omelet called the garbage because it had everything in it. <laughs> and so I just looked at him, I'm like, what are you going to get? And he told me he was going to get the garbage omelet. And I said, um, you know, you are what you eat. And I didn't really mean that. But seriously, you know, you are what you eat. If we eat the word of God, it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hello, in Colossians 2, it says that Christ is our head. Colossians 1 and Colossians 2, okay? It says that Christ is our head. So the more that we eat that word, right, we are the word become flesh again. I'm not bringing Jesus down. I'm taking us up to Jesus today, okay? Finally, let's look at John the Revelator, who has given us the revelation of Jesus Christ, which is the book of Revelation, okay? Um, it says in Revelation 10, I think it's verse 8, um, it says... The voice that I heard from heaven spoke to me. What did he say? Go take that little book, that scroll, which is open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went up to the angel and asked him to give me that little book. And he said to me, take it, eat it. <laughs> take it and eat it, right? It will embitter your stomach, though in your mouth it will be sweet as honey. So I took the little book from the angel's hand and I ate it and I swallowed it. And it was sweet as honey in my mouth. But once I had swallowed it, my stomach was embittered. Then, what did he say? He said, you are to make a fresh prophecy concerning my peoples and races and nations and languages and kings. Hello! It's the word of God that causes the prophecy to be brought forth, right? Come on! The book of Revelation, where did it come from? He ate the word. He gave us the prophecy, right? Praise God. Praise God. All right. But the very first qualification of speaking his word is to eat his word, okay? Therefore, some teachers and preachers, um, they never come into this, and it's really sad, and they have this form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof because the power is in God's word. It is the power source of the universe, okay? In Mark 7 and verse 6, it says this. It says, when the, well, it's actually, when the Pharisees and the scribes were questioning Jesus as to why his disciples ate with unwashed hands, right? Jesus said this in 7, 6, Mark 7, 6, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? Man, Jesus was a loving dude, wasn't he? <laughs> I'm telling you why. The word hypocrite was not a good word back then, okay? As it is written, this people, what is he talking to these religious people? He said, they honor me with their lips. Oh, yes, I'm a believer. I follow God. I am a child of Abraham. Look at me, right? But their heart is far from me. That's why David was chosen, because God looks at the heart. God looks at the heart, right? It says, verse 7, And in vain they worship me, what? Teaching as doctrines and commandments of men. 
So these little doctrine, these little cliques out here, they have their own doctrines and commandments of men teaching them rather than teaching the pure, unadulterated word of God. Right? And that is how it's Jesus said in vain they worship me, right? Okay, for laying aside, listen to this, laying aside the commandment of God, you hold to your traditions. Come on. The washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do. I mean, he's talking to them about these things, but come on. Anything traditional, it's just religion, right? All too well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your traditions. Wow. Okay. It says in verse 10, For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and he who curses father and mother, let him be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father and mother, What profit um, you might have received from me as Corbin, that is a gift of God, then you no longer let him do anything for his father and mother. And he's talking about something, something very specific here. You can go back and read the context. I'm not taking it out of context. I'm just making the point with what I have here. Verse 13, it says, making the word of God of no effect through your traditions, which you have, what, handed down, and many such things you do, okay? So I'm doing this because my mom and dad did this. Uh, this is how we've always done it. What did Jesus tell you to do? It's all written in here, his word. Get in his word. Pray over his word every day. And he will show you what you need. He will show you, you know what? DNA. He made every one of us have our own special little DNA. Everybody is different. There's no man that can tell you how to walk out your purpose and call. Allow no man to tell you what your purpose and call is. Only allow the creator to tell you what your purpose and call is. And then guess what? He's going to work in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Philippians 2.13. But only when you exercise 14 by doing all things without murmuring and complaining. Because when he starts working in you, working that flesh out of you, guess what's going to happen? <laughs> You're going to have to zip the lip. <laughs> all right. Okay. In many settings, people have become so traditional without the word of God. All right. Um, I want to go ahead and I want to talk just briefly about the, the way of the truth being evil spoken of. When the high priest Ananias came down from Jerusalem to Caesarea with some elders and Tertullus, acting as a spokesman and counsel, they presented to the governor Felix their evidence against Paul. You know, he's a man of God, right? Tertullus said, we have found this man a perfect pest. He's a real plague. Dude, this guy, he, he's totally... You know, he just keeps on and on and on with this stuff, right? What was he doing? He was giving the gospel, right? And an agitator and the source of disturbance to who? The Jews, the religious people. He was all about the truth, right? Throughout the whole world. And he's a ringleader of the heretical division-producing sect of the Nazarenes. He also even tried to disintegrate and defile the temple. You find that in Acts 24, 5, and 6. Then, in Acts 24 and 9, we read this. The Jews also agreed and joined in this accusation, declaring that all things, all these things were exactly so, right? So, the way of the truth will be evil spoken of, right? Come on. If you find somebody that they're speaking evil of, you need to go talk to them. Okay? You need to go talk to them. I encourage you to go talk to the Word of God and pray about it. Keep in mind that these were religious people, and religious people will always be speaking evil of the truth of God's word and those who stand against it, okay? That's why I believe it is in Titus 3, 2. It says, speak evil of no man. Speak evil of no man. In Paul's defense, this is what he declares in 24 and 14. But this I confess to you, however, that in accordance with the way of the Lord, the way of the Lord, get this, Paul says, his way is the way of the Lord, which they call a heretical division-producing sect. Come on! I worship and serve the God of our Father, still persuaded of what? Of the truth. Of the truth. And of believing in all, and believing in and placing all full confidence in everything laid down in the law of Moses or written by the prophets. Paul declares that in this accusation to the religious people that they have stood against him is it in accordance with the way of the Lord? 
that, which they call heresy. However, Paul still stands firm in his believing in the law of Moses and what was written in the prophets, okay? I believe it is 2 Corinthians 13 and 8. Paul says, for we can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth. And that's where his people need to stand. I don't care what it looks like on the outside. My God is able, okay? I believe everything from Genesis to Revelation, and I believe that we need to study to show ourselves approved, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing, rightly dissecting. I'm not saying it's not, it's not about fighting. We're not supposed to enter into strife. But you study to show yourself approved. You're not studying to show anybody else approved. And you don't have to take any of my word for it because you just read the scriptures. Amen. You just read the scriptures. Praise God. Thus, it says in 2 Peter 3 and 18, I'm going to leave you this reminder. We're to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We, buy, we do this by and through the word of God. If you're tired of milk, you can have meat. Just continue in his word. 2 Corinthians 3, 2, it says this. No, you yourselves are our letter of recommendation, our credentials, written in your hearts to be known, perceived, and recognized and read by everybody. When you've got the Word of God in you, you're like this fantastic platter that you see at this restaurant. I mean, you're better than that. But you know those, right, the waitress, she goes by and she's got this platter and everything, you know. She's giving this and you're like, wow, what are they having, right? You're like that. You're that epistle read and known by all men, right? Praise God. It says in the Amplified, verse 3, it says, You show and make obvious that you are a letter from Christ delivered to us. And that's really what we're supposed to be. Not written with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on the tablets of the human heart. It is written that the just shall live by faith. Not by feelings, okay? And the way that we are going to do that is to continue in His Word. And get to the point where we can get the word out. Come on. The more that you continue in the word, the more he's going to be able to use you. You guys want to be used by God? Or are you just happy in complacency, Bill? I'm not. I want all five crowns, man. I want to take it all the way. As long as, as far as he will take me, I want to go. I, I am driven. Okay. <clears throat> now, whatever your need is today, it is written. It is written. If you have need of healing today... By the stripes of Jesus, I decree and declare that you are healed, right? Galatians 3 and 13 says that Christ became a curse, thus taking, taking every curse from you. He took, he took that curse from you today. You do not have to have any curse of sickness or disease upon you today. Exodus 15 and 26 says, I, the Lord, am your healer, okay? If you have, if you have a need of finances, come on. It is written. It is, Deuteronomy 8 and 18 says, It is the Lord thy God that gives thee power to get wealth, that he might establish his covenant, which he swore unto the fathers. Come on. Philippians 4 19. I will liberally supply all your need according to my riches and glory, or his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Come on, I'm just giving you some examples that you can use. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians. This is really good. If you have a financial need today, 2 Corinthians and 9 and 8 says that God is able to make all grace, every favor and blessing come to you. How? In abundance, baby. So that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and, tra and charitable donation. That's a good word today. That's some good word. He that hath an ear, let him hear that, okay? All right, oppression. It says in uh, Isaiah 54 and 14, you shall establish yourself in righteousness, rightness in conformity with God's order, and you shall be far from even the thought of oppression or destruction. I mean, even the thought of it, right? Praise God. For you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you, right? How about favor? Guys need favor? I need favor. I got the favor of God and man just all over me every morning. He daily loads me with benefits. I wake up, I got all these benefits just pouring on me before I even get up out of bed. Praise God, that's good news. Praise God. It says over in John 1 and 16 in the Amplified, it says, For out of his fullness, no man, no man involved here, right? We're talking about his fullness, the man that owns, the guy that owns the cattle on the thousand hills, right? His fullness and abundance we have all received and all had a share in and we were all supplied with what? One grace. 
after another, right? Spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing. Gift heaped upon gift. Every morning before you even get up out of bed, you got this just all over you, man. Praise God. Proverbs um, uh, says this. Let's see. In the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is a cloud bringing the spring rain. So we can have clouds of favor just overshadowing us. How about lost loved ones? You guys got lost loved ones? You can pray over in Hebrews 1 and 14. God, you says that you sent your ministering angels to minister to those who should be what? Heirs of salvation. Heirs of salvation. Angels, they have to go. They have to hearken unto the word of God. So you speak that, those angels got to go hearken unto the word of God. How about 2 Corinthians 5 and 17? That they are new creations. You, you speak your loved one's name. I decree and declare that such and such is a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. All things have become new. I'm talking about it is written. These are things that you can use. It is written today. How about Colossians 1 and 13? That he has delivered them from the powers of darkness and translated them to the kingdom of his dear son. Praise God. That's a good thing to think about today. How about wisdom? Uh, James 1 and 5 it says, if any man likes wisdom, all we got to do is ask. He's not gonna. He's not gonna whoop your butt for asking, right? Praise God. Over in Luke twenty-one and fifteen, it says that He's given unto us. Um, let me just read that. <laughs> for some reason, my brain is. Um, I have the mind of Christ. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom that all your gainsayers shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. That's pretty good. A mouth and wisdom. Okay. Over in 1 John 2.20, it says that you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. Verse 27 says, you have no need that any man should even teach you. Just let the Word of God teach you. Come on, that's good news. I'm just telling you some it is written scriptures. So, I encourage you to get into the Word. Allow the Word of God to get into you. No matter what your situation is, get on this diet. Get in the Word of God. And start practicing what it says. You'll find over and over in the Word of God that it says practice. Practice. Do this. If you do this. If you do that. You know what? It's a law of sowing and reaping. God says, if you do this, then I'm going to do this. It may not happen immediately, but it will happen. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Praise God. All right. Father, we just thank you so much for everyone that's joined us today. We just praise you. We glorify you, Father God. And you said your word that... Um, in your presence is fullness of joy, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, that you've daily loaded us with these great and exceeding precious promises today, Father God, that we can be partakers of this divine nature, having Christ as our head today, Father God, that nothing is impossible to us today. In Jesus' mighty name, Father God. Father God, and I just ask in Jesus' mighty name that every seed that is sown today, Father God, would go into fertile ground, Father God, and we would take responsibility and start praying over the word of God and taking our purpose and call seriously in Jesus mighty name Father God and I just decree and declare Father God be it unto us according to your word today Father God let us have a zeal a greater zeal a greater comfort Father God for the harvest that's among us Father God that we would be used of you in Jesus mighty name Amen